We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Oh, hello and welcome to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and it's finally race week again. Thank it goodness, because this last week was kind of boring. <laughs> we only had to wait like an extra week compared to all summer break and like the four weeks where the, we were supposed to have China, but we're back. Yeah, it just, it's, I don't know, we, I think it was because there, like, wasn't a lot of news anyway, like, usually you it have, like, stuff going on, it was a very slow news it week. really, yeah, it was, it was really light on, light on the news, um, but, no, how have things been? I know, I feel like we haven't really talked, because there hasn't been any news to talk about, <laughs> where you been, yeah. Catherine, where you been my whole life, um, no, I've been good, <laughs> just, you know, hanging out. I'm uh, prepping to come back to the U.S. actually. I'll be back next week. I'm very excited. So kind of. I have to take CPA exams so that's not exciting. Um, But I'll be back in Texas so we get to do some more episodes of Where in the World is Emily podcasting from um, including potentially some airport lounges uh, which will be exciting. But no just you know studying, hanging out, doing the norm which is absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, what about you, Catherine? Uh, yeah, you know, not much. All has been relatively quiet. I got a new tattoo over the weekend. Um, that's so so cool. that's, yeah, I, I was telling myself I wasn't going to get another tattoo until after my sister's wedding. But then this person that I follow, who's a tattoo artist, was discounting a bunch of their flash. Um, and I was like, I want that. So, Catherine has a new tattoo that will f- probably be if not mostly healed by the time my sister's wedding rolls around which of course is the same day as the uh Japanese Grand Prix so it's gonna be a very busy day for me does sister know about tattoo sister knows about tattoo and sister also knows that wedding and race day are uh overlapping um also overlapping with the UCLA football game which is fortunately um hopefully the game will be over by the time the wedding is supposed to start. So timing is going to work out relatively well, I think. Love you, sister, but love sports more. <laughs> I mean, hey, the first thing that my, my dad said when he sent me the um, the schedule update and that they had announced the timings for the games next week was that my sister had planned it perfectly because, you know, she that's exactly what she was thinking when she was planning her wedding is when was the UCLA football game going to be? Yeah, I know. Well, not going to lie, like, when I was booking my flight home, I was like, well, they asked me, because my company is paying for this flight, and they're like, oh, can you just leave on Saturday? I'm like, actually, no, I can't, because that means I would land on Sunday, that interrupts races, so I need to leave Friday. Um, But no, actually, I do have a a family commitment on Saturday, so I have to be home on Saturday um, for a family thing, so that's not the real reason why, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, thank God I have to be home for a family commitment, because if I told my company, like, actually, I have some races I need to watch and football, uh, that would not be a good enough excuse, so. um, Yeah, that probably wouldn't go over very well. No, no, but I, I have family stuff that I had to coordinate, and, you know, how that goes so that's uh that was an excuse that was okay with them so um but yeah so that's a little update on us but I know there wasn't a ton of news over the last you know 10 days or so since Monza but we do have a few stories we want to catch up on before we get into our predictions for Singapore so getting into some of the news of the last few weeks we have some kind of news that we already reported on that was kind of like walked back and now we're coming back to it me 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 um Zhou Guan Yu is now truly potentially still not confirmed but kind of (laughs) expected to re-sign with Alfa Romeo for the 2024 season I made a joke that they finally found cap space in their budget <laughs> because they <laughs> they nixed the rest of their liveries for the rest of the season because um, it came out earlier that he was expected to resign and then it was well maybe not because of budget issues um, and then and, they announced another different livery for that like following race weekend <laughs> and then they announced another livery you change up your liveries that gets expensive um, hence our joke but I think yeah. it's just maybe because he's driving a little bit 
better maybe looking a little better not having as many issues with the car which also helps with the budget you're not making repairs things like that um but I'm happy I'm really happy to see him you know expecting to return to the track for 2024 yeah, I, I read in, in a couple articles that it was it was very much like um, his, his seat was very sought after by a bunch of reserve drivers, F2 drivers, um, but Alfa Romeo, which will be going back to Sauber next season, because Alfa Romeo, I believe, is going to now be sponsoring Haas. It's going to be a whole little merry-go-round. Um, I think they just, they, they've decided to stick with with the, the driver that they know who's been driving with them for a couple years now, um, who is is, you know, pretty solid considering their car kind of sucks yeah I mean I think some people also saw too the not necessarily mistake but the struggles that Haas had with a you know two rookie drivers bringing a rookie in is always risky you never really know how they're going to do especially you know Alfa Romeo's leaving it's just going to be sober it's a lot of changes so having someone tested and true you kind of know them they know you might be helpful for for a transition year so yeah exactly and and we don't have this on our our rundown but I on as an aside it looks like that um Williams has not decided yet on the fate of Logan Sargent's seat um uh James Vows the team principal said that you know they're he's gonna have to earn his seat so he 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 has a chance to keep it for 2024 but we just uh, they have not made that decision yet. And obviously, we have a bunch more races to go that he has every opportunity to continue to uh, try to impress them. Yeah, because it was also like rumored that Mick Schumacher's, you know, fate in a F1 car for 2024 is like looking abysmal. So it's like, okay, does that mean yeah. that Logan Sargent's seat is like almost confirmed then? Or what's happening there? Or is this all just a bunch of baloney and no one knows what's going on <laughs> so I, I think it's it's either it's going to be either Logan or it's going to be Mick um I and agree. they're they're just not going to make that decision until towards the end of the season completely agree I think James is going to give Logan the opportunity at least and not just like Absolutely. take it away so good for them yeah Speaking of teams that have not confirmed either of their drivers for next season, um, AlphaTauri, we ha- don't have any any news about that, but they have um, said that Danny Ricardo, who is recovering from his broken hand, will be in attendance at the Singapore Grand Prix doing, um, you know, engineering stuff with AlphaTauri. Um, but he's still recovering. He's not going to be doing any media or talking to any press, but he will be present because obviously, I mean, it's his hand. It's, it, you know, it's not like he can't travel. Um, but he he will be there um he's still recovering I I think they're going to announce week to week um that Liam Lawson is going to still be staying in the car but they've announced for this weekend that Liam Lawson will be driving at Singapore they'll probably announce next Tuesday that Liam Lawson will be driving in Suzuka um and then I I expect that we'll see um Danny back in in the car uh the weekend of October 6th through 8th for Qatar Qatar yeah yeah um Super random, but when you said they're they don't have any seats confirmed, it made me think of like the headless horseman. But it's like the seat, like the the driverless like cars, the driverless one cars. I don't know why, but as you're like talking that entire time, I'm just like imagining like F one cars like driving around the track, <laughs> like out without any. And then and then this is where my brain goes. I'm like, oh, and then Scooby Doo and and the mystery machine are gonna try and figure out who's doing it. Someone's had a long day of work. <laughs> Someone hasn't slept in a few days. Oh my, oh my god. god. I'm so sorry. Um, not to like get super off track, but like how funny would that be? You know, that just would like be seeing... ho- very, and it would very be... Halloween themed. Which yeah, is timely. right. I know, but uh, but no, I completely agree. It's going to be week to week because even though AlphaTauri is you know very separate from Red Bull, Red Bull still really controls this team. It feels like, and every time something comes out about Danny, I feel like you know Horner's the one talking about it. Um, and they're not a team to kind of say something then take it back, say something then take it back. So I think it's definitely going to be week to week. Even though the next few weeks will be Lawson, uh, it's easier just to do it week by week than to make a big, large projection of like, oh no, Danny won't be back for a really long time, then maybe he is, so 
Yeah, exactly. I'm sad exactly. he won't be made available for media, though, which makes sense because it's all going to be like, how are you feeling? Are you coming back for, you know, the Japan When are GP? you coming back is the only question When are you coming back? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and that's a lot. And so just, like, letting him be is is good for him. But Let him do his job. I just love hearing him talk. He's such a happy, positive person, and, you know, yeah. he's fun to see on track. But anyways. Yeah. Oh, Danny. Well, I do wish him well and a, you know, speedy recovery and hope he's feeling better. But Same, same. Anyways. Looking at the track in Singapore, we have a new livery again. This seems to be a theme every single week. Uh, yeah. This time it's McLaren. Yes. And it is the stealth mode or the stealth livery <laughs> that they have revealed. I actually like this one. Um, I didn't like McLaren's alternative livery earlier, but I do like this one. And they will have it for both Singapore and Suzuka. So it's not just a one-time race livery. They will have it for two. Um, it's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Normally, I don't yeah. love all of the alternative liveries or the special liveries, but this one's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I like, really like it. It's Black is my favorite color, obviously. Um, but... Yeah, I, I think th this one is, is pretty cool. I think this looks better than their, like, totally not a cigarette-themed um, livery from earlier on in the season. Um, so I, I'm, Catherine, I'm, I'm here for they were it. honoring three very historic races that they won, and it was yes. very segmented. We all know this. Yes, because you're not allowed to promote cigarette brands or tobacco brands in F1 anymore. Wink. I can't wink, but we'll pretend. <laughs> yeah yeah I but I I, I do like it. it it's 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 fun um it's another you know what car is that but at least it's the the orange stands out enough that you are gonna know that that's a that's a McLaren car driving on that track well in the google wheels like no matter what and you know it's McLaren I is the google wheels love the google wheels though. I love the google wheels they're so cool and different yeah. like the marketing genius behind the google wheels deserves any raise Every or race. bonus they want Every raise, Absolutely. every bonus. Like, so Absolutely. good. Like, yeah. genius. We ran out of room on the car, throw it on the wheels. Love it. Yeah. So good. So good. Yeah. Yeah. So our our last bit of news, which was kind of like the biggest news of, of the last, you know, 10 days, is uh, Red Bull's uh, Helmet Marco said a racist uh, about Sergio Perez um, and then had to apologize. And, and we're not going to make light of this because it, it's defi it was definitely totally inappropriate. Um, he, he kind of, you know said that Perez's, um, you know, challenges, especially with qualifying, were because he's, and I'm saying this because this is the quote, South American, which to, you know, be be particular, Sergio Perez is from Mexico, part of North America. Um, but um, he, he basically said that it was because of his, you know, ethnicity that he was having his trouble and that, you know, the European drivers are more focused um, and that's a bad thing. And then Helmut Marco had to apologize Apologize, and now Helmut Marco has said that he will not be speaking um, about anything related to um, Sergio Perez and probably ever anyone else um, that's a driver for Red Bull um, or the Red Bull family, um, unless it is sporting related. Um, what do you think about all this, Emily, especially since you're in South America? I mean, it's a stupid comment. It was really dumb. Yeah. I think it was like extremely uncalled for. If Helmet thinks he's unfocused, then he should say he's unfocused, period. Like, don't generalize it for his ethnicity, whatever. I I don't have the viewpoint, but just being here in South America and all my friends, like, when it came out, were, you know, not, like, overly offended, but they did take offense to it because we are in South America, they're Argentinian, they're South American. Um, and, you know, the overgeneralization of basically calling them lazy like they didn't take kindly to that and it was yeah. uncalled for shouldn't have been said um and I think it's kind of bad on Red Bull for just making him apologize and doing nothing else like I understand he's very yeah. important to your organization but I think something more maybe should have been done personally but it's just interesting being here and having something said about you know your entire continent um and hearing my friends react to it, like, obviously, I'm American, so I am not part of, you know, the culture that was 
targeted. Um, but it was just interesting to get their, you know, feedback on it. So they didn't love it. Yeah. Totally I mean, understandable. It's, yeah. I mean, and it's, I, th- I think that part of it is Helmet Marco um, trying to be PC and was just like trying to be way overly PC and it completely and totally backfired, um, which is, you know, he, he, he's got to learn sometime. It's, it's 2023 at this point. Come on, guys. Yeah. If you want to say he's unfocused and he's not doing a good job, just say that point blank done. Like you don't have to bring people's ethnicities and cultures into it. Like, yeah, that's, I don't know. yeah, that's the whole, the whole, whole and if, part of it. Yeah. And like, I don't know. And it's, he's saying he's not like Max. Well, is anyone Obviously. like Max sitting in a, in a simulator for 23 of the 24 hours a day? No. And if they're not, does that make them unfocused? I don't think so. So I don't know. It's just, and yeah, I think it's a dumb comment. It shouldn't have been made. Yeah. And I think he's also will... 10 years older than Max. Like, I know. Perez is my age. Oh, that's right. I, I forgot we did this whole, like, driver age thing that one time. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and he also has, like, a family and kids. And so, like, there's they're naturally on different paths of their lives and different stages of their lives. So, I don't know. I think Helmet just was, like, speaking out of turn and doesn't, you know, that comment yeah. didn't need to be said. Yeah, definitely did it. That was, that was the big did a dumb of the not race week. Right there. Yep, hundred percent. But also did a dumb like Red Bull should have done more than just be like, "Hey, go say some words." Thank you. Bye. Yeah, yeah. That was I because we were we were looking um, at you know what what kind of you know announced you know penalty or punishment that that he got when you know all all that there was was the statement that he released and I I don't think it was enough. Like then I just. No. No, he there. I don't know what would be an appropriate consequence, but I know that what they did for him, unless there's something internal that they haven't announced, I, I think that they needed needed to do more. Right, and like maybe there is, and you know maybe him only being able to talk on sporting means like he is really limited in his role now. Whatever, like we you know can't speak to everything, but I don't know. Yeah, maybe it means that he's gonna be taking a break from speaking to media for a while. Yeah. Who knows? But yeah, we'll see. But anyway, we got a race this weekend. We do. We do. We are going to Singapore. I am yeah. pumped. I love this race. It is the yeah. OG, OG night race. I love it. Under the lights. It's great. Yeah. Like this so is like the, the first race that I was like, I need to find a way to go to this race. Um, Let's add I, it to the list, into, Catherine. Well, I mean, obviously we're adding it to the list, but I'm, if I'm thinking of, like, when I started getting into Formula 1 in, in 2021, like, of the, the races, I was like, I need to go to a Formula 1 race. My immediate first thought was Singapore. Really? Yeah. It just, it looked really cool. I'd only seen, like, half a season's worth of races, um, but it's cool. It's a night race. I mean, Singapore, I it, you know, was totally, you know, hyped up with, like, Crazy Rich Asians when that movie came out. Um, and it's just, like, beautiful Singapore marketing piece. Um, so I'm just, like, I'm I just want to hang out in the out. airport, honestly. That airport looks Right? Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's so interesting that this is, like, the one that you would want to go to, like, originally. Like, because when I started watching, like, really getting into F1, I was like, I have to go to Spa or Sil- Silverstone. Like, those were the two where I was like, one of those is going to be my first. Or Austin, because right. Coda's, like, in my parents' backyard. But, right, exactly. Um, but, yeah, those three, I was like, those are the ones that I'm going to go to. And now I'm, like, leaning towards, obviously, different ones. Or every single race. But Every single race. We're like, we need to go to that one. <laughs> Add it to the list. Uh, we just have to start ranking them. That's what we have to do. But that's yes. interesting that uh that Singapore But now that you say it, I, I, I will throw Singapore high up on our list. Yeah, I just think it's I like think... super cool. It's a street race, it's right in the middle of like downtown. Um yeah. and it's like it just looks really freaking cool. It does, it does. It looks like it's a lot of fun and a good time. Yeah. And it also the looks fireworks. so humid. And the, the fireworks. fireworks. The fire Oh. I would go just for the humidity. My hair oh my does so well in humidity. Oh, I mine, love it. Mine is just terrible. It it rained here in Arizona last night, which is probably going to be a poor tent for Sunday. Um, and my hair is just not handling the humidity at all. It never does, um, which is why I have ponytail. Oh, just wait for it to be summer here. 
in oh, a gosh, few weeks. Oh gosh, good luck with that. Weeks. Oh no, this this hair does wonders in humidity. But <laughs> anyways, getting <laughs> this getting is not a hair podcast. It. This is not a hair podcast. Um, no, but getting back to it, something that's fun about Singapore this year, it's a kind of a new track. There's some yeah. uh, renovations going on near the track. So they have actually taken out turns 16 through 19 in sector three. So it's going to be faster this year, which will be exciting. Yeah, they're, they're saying somewhere between like 10 to 20 seconds faster. Um, so basically every track record is, is going to, to be broken. Um, and I, think I wonder if they'll that... asterisk it though. Like if it's oh, like, definitely. oh, they have to, I would assume. Because it's, it's, it's going like back the, to the normal track next year. There's just yeah. construction this year. Yeah, it, it's like if you look at the the Singapore GP Wikipedia page. I know Wikipedia, no one cares. Um, but if you look at the the Wikipedia page, it has like the breakdowns of like the records for like all the different iterations of the track. I think they've had like four or five different ones. Um, so this will just be a di- another different iteration. I think it's really interesting because you know Singapore is known to be like a really challenging race track, um, and I think that this will make it easier um and i i don't know yet if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing so that'll be something to look out for this weekend i know there's always like chaos and i love it yeah we, well you it know also that helps like if the weather race. predicts it's gonna rain so oh the rain and humidity it's so yeah. hot there too it's like what 45 degrees celsius which is like 118 something maybe uh yeah i don't think it's gonna be that hot I, but i think it's gonna be i think it's gonna be like in the 80s plus like 80 percent humidity which makes it feel like it feels like yeah yeah that's what it is like with humidity. humidity yeah yeah that's like with humidity i think yeah you're, you're, it's just, you're just you're just you're just you're walking in you're dying you're yeah, just it's, you're it's, dying it's, you're dead. I lived I lived in Alabama for for almost a year and the humidity was just like way too much for me and just like not not about that life. Moral of the story, Catherine doesn't do well in humidity. No, I don't. <laughs> Hates humidity. Very I much. I thrive. So. Love humidity. Um okay. So <laughs> so so maybe yeah. we can't go to Singapore. Oh no, we're going to Singapore. I'm just going to complain about the humidity the entire time. So be prepared. Okay, I will. I will yeah. prepare myself for that. Um, yeah. Also, and it's, um, okay. I was just going to say that this, um, the very first race was also basically like immortalized by everyone's favorite crash gate incident. Um, made made relevant again because Felipe Massa is, you know, threatening. I haven't looked it up lately, but he's, he's trying to get support for his litigation to try to get that... Uh, that 2008 championship in his name instead uh, take it away from Lewis, which he's trying to get Lewis to back him for it. And I just don't think that's going to happen. I know. I honestly, I think it's just annoying at this point and I've kind of ignored it, which personal opinion, that's my personal opinion. I may or may not be right on that, but I'm just, I just don't think it's going to happen. Like, no, I, I don't either. And I think it's weird that he wants Lewis to back him. And I'm just, I've, lost interest in the story personally because I think it's dumb so that's just my personal viewpoint of of it maybe that's wrong but whatever I mean I I said in gosh I don't even remember which episode we talked about it but if you're watching on YouTube I'll put it a card up at the at the corner um but the um oh it was the silly season silly season, silly season, silly recap. season recap um but I think that if anything they would just invalidate um the Renault finish because it was when Fernando Alonso was driving for Renault that Nelson Piquet Jr. crashed in allegedly crashed intentionally to give Fernando better track position um and I think that if anything would happen they would just invalidate Fernando's results and the because that's the only Renault results and the Renault was the only like the, the team that benefited from that crash um and that it still wouldn't help um, Masa get the points that he needs to retroactively become the the new world champion for that year. I just don't. I, I don't see it happening. No, I don't either. Yeah. But and this is from Singapore. someone who is not a Lewis Hamilton fan. No. <laughs> Wait, let's go back to this. Catherine speaking highly of Lewis Hamilton <laughs> has hella frozen Breaking over. Breaking news. Breaking news. Hella's frozen over. Oh no. But back to Singapore. Um, yeah, this is the crash gate. Um, which Track. I think is so interesting, um, just an interesting concept in general that 
something like that happen. But um, yeah. this is a track that Max has never won at. I think that's really interesting. Interesting. His, his best finish is P2. Um, yeah. And that was in, in 2018. He finished, I think, P7 last season. Um, and So we have high hopes for this season. So, so uh. it could be a very So you're saying there's race. a chance, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm saying. Well, I think that he's also be, going to be feeling a lot of revenge-related feelings because the reason why he didn't do well last season, for better or for worse, is that they didn't put enough fuel in the car for him to do his last hot lap um, during qualifying. So he did not qualify very well, and end up. Um, there was some safety cars. I think there was a red flag period. There was cra- You know, there was a couple of crashes. This sounds like Latifi. a lot of excuses to me. Latifi did Latifi things. I'm so I'm just saying, and it like you know, Paris Paris won the race anyway, so Red Bull was happy. Um, but yeah, it it could be very interesting. But I also still think, and we'll get to our predictions later. But I still think Max is going to win this one. <laughs> I know I do, I do too. But that's <laughs> only because I'm predicting him to win every single race for the rest of the season, so we can just get it over with and move on to 2024. <laughs> <laughs> Only reason. That's fair. There, there has actually there's been a safety car period in each race at Singapore each year. So yeah, it's a wild. We it's a wild one. To see, uh, or I personally expect to see uh, another safety car at some point, especially with this like massive threat of rain. I think I looked up and it said that there was a seventy percent chance, and it's Wednesday when we're recording, and so this is for Sunday, so it could change. Uh, but I just think that it's gonna rain. I can't get over how much rain there's been this year. Right. It's insane. It, yeah, it, it's it's so much. Like I just. Oh my gosh! I, I wonder if it's gonna be it. like torrential downpour for Suzuka again this year. Oh my god! Not again. <laughs> I will never forget last year. I didn't watch it because it was at like three o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. Oh, I watched all of whatever this. ungodly horrible time. And I wake yeah, up no, to, was... like, a hundred DMs from you. <laughs> and I'm like, so something happened. Um, oh, I w- we, we will talk about this next week in, in next week's race preview. We're getting ahead of ourselves. I built a head of steam with what <laughs> happened last year at, at Suzuka. And, and you, will, you will see why I was mad. Um, and if you had watched we'll the race whole, last year, we'll do, we'll a, do a retrospective. Catherine is... <laughs> Re- retrospective on Suzuka. I'm I'm sure we'll give you your soapbox for like six minutes, and then I'll call track limits on you. But, um, anyways, I remember that, and yeah. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But lots of safety cars, lots of rain. It's been a crazy yeah. season, and I feel like it will probably continue this weekend. But we'll see. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so last year, like Catherine was saying, um, Max did not do well, and Checo won, yes. Leclerc got second, and Carlos got third. Yes. And it was a wild, wild race last year, because it was delayed, because yeah. of thunderstorms, they couldn't start, because of bad weather. Yeah, I vaguely remember just, like, zoning out on the couch waiting for the race to start because it was – the race starts at 5 a.m. where I live, so it was a very early morning, and then it was like, really, we're not starting on time? What the hell? Yeah. I don't remember this delay, but now that you're saying this and we're talking about it, I kind of do, but I was just, like, in bed because it was, like, 10 o'clock for me in the morning. Um, And, yeah, it was just, like, kind of a wild race, and then Max just, you know – finished seventh and I don't know and Yuki retired yeah Akon retired yep Albon retired Alonzo yep. retired yep. Latifi retired yep and Joe Guan Yu retired yep so <laughs> so when we say retired. there was a bit of a wild race there were six retirements in one yeah, race yeah yeah, it, it's not often where you see 14 race finishers. Um, it was, yeah, that was a, it was kind of a bloodbath. Yeah, it wasn't great. It was pretty wild. But, yeah. Um, oops. yeah, oops, there was just some oopses. Just a few. Yeah, a couple oops. oopses. Paris got a penalty, but managed to win anyway. 
Yeah. Yeah. There, there, and there were also at that time there were two scenarios for um, Max winning uh, the drivers championship at Singapore, um, but um, both involved him winning the race and um, involved both Leclerc and Perez not doing well. So that clearly did not happen. So we had to wait a week for the weirdness that was Suzuka, which we will talk about in the next week's predictions oh episode. Gosh, I know. That's gonna be a, just, that's gonna be a longer episode. I feel like we've been talking about Suzuka for like six weeks too, but we just keep. Definitely. It was just wild. It was just like the race of the year last year. All time, multiple reasons. Yes, um, we'll get into it. Anyways, okay, so for this weekend, we do have some possibilities for a constructors title. Yes, if Red Bull gets first and second. And Mercedes fails to score. Or Red Bull gets first and second. And they get fastest lap. And Mercedes doesn't get more than one point. Yeah. So it's possible. It's possible. But it's probably not going to happen. But it's very remotely possible. Unless yeah, it's... Mercedes does like a really big oopsie. And I don't know. It's possible. But very remote. So. Yeah, I mean they've really been talking about Red Bull fans. Do well, so. <laughs> Catherine, don't, don't hold your breath. I'm gonna. I am not um, holding my breath. I am very reasonable about the. You're like it's fine. Minutes. We're gonna win it anyways. It doesn't matter. It's what gonna race. happen We're eventually. Win it anyways. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. And on that note, let's get into our note, predictions. Let's get into our race predictions. <laughs> so, Catherine, who do you have as your podium picks this week? I have surprisingly. Max Verstappen as my P1, Sergio Perez as my P2, and Carlos Sainz as my P3. What about you, Emily? Love it. So, unsurprisingly, but surprisingly, I have Max Verstappen P1. Again, to all of those out there who know that I hate Red Bull, it is only because he needs to win every single race just to, like, get rid of this season and move on. Um, so he's my P1. I have Fernando Alonso P2 and Carlos Sainz P3 because we do not put Checo on the podium. <laughs> you do not put Checo on the podium. <laughs> like, like Catherine doesn't put Lewis Hamilton on the podium. I don't put Checo on the podium. So there we go. That, that's um, fair. So for pole, Catherine, who is your, who's in pole position for you this week? So it's Max, but... I actually did take a minute to think about this because, um, the like we said earlier, the track is different this year. There's um, there's three turns missing. Um, a whole like the whole area in in the third sector is is not going to be there this season. Um, and so I was actually leaning towards um, putting Leclerc on on my pole pick, uh, but then I just thinking about the fact that this, you know, this is a challenging track, but this is also going to be an easier challenging track. Um, I was like, I have to go with Max. That's fine. So yeah, that's my choice. Thanks. So I am going Carlos Sainz because he's coming in hot from Monza. He drove really, really good in Monza. I think this track might be okay for him and we all know the ferrari car is good for one hot lap one <laughs> hot lap it can't last an entire race because that involves people giving strategy but for a hot effective lap effective strategy <laughs> strategy in general um but for a hot lap i think carlos can pull it out again so i have carlos as pole I and like my it. My favorite prediction that we do is RP10, the last position that actually gets points. You only get one point, but you do get a point. So, Catherine, who is your P10 for this weekend? My P10 pick um, was originally Yuki, but then I changed it to Lance Stroll um, because I... I expect him to be somewhere near the points and you know he does tend to excel when it's a rainy race um so I can see Lance in that p10 position nice and what about you bold but nice um you know I really like to kind of pull a wild card here either with my podium picks or with the p10s I'm going Liam Lawson you know I really like what we've been seeing from him he keeps getting better every single week and he drove really well in Zanvoort. Um, 
a second rainy race for him, I think it, maybe he can get in some points. So we're going P10 Liam Lawson. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I it just like instinctively I was like, let's go for it. Why not? Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's you got see. the vibes. I do. So what is your surprise of the weekend? Uh, my surprise of the weekend is that Alpine will bounce back from their mediocre performance at Monza and will leave the weekend slightly less miserable than they've been feeling lately. Who drives for Alpine again? I don't I'm just even kidding. know at this point. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Our, our Frenchmen from the French team. No, I, I like that surprise. I, I know Alpine's been struggling a lot. Or, well, they haven't been, though, because Gasly got podium and then Monza they just I don't know dipped off but yeah um, but before the podium uh it was not great (laughs) yeah no agreed 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 so no I like that one that's a that's a positive surprise very nice yeah um also on a positive note my surprise is that there's no safety car we're hoping for a nice clean race Hmm. hopefully no crashing everyone's safe sunshines and rainbows over here (laughs) Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> I don't know. I think it'd be a really big surprise, something that's, you know, never happened. It would be a surprise. Who knows? It would be. We'll see. Um, and Catherine's favorite, the Ferrari poking fun of our, um, who's going to do a dumb this weekend, Catherine? Well, I wasn't originally going to say Ferrari is totally going to flub the rain strategy, but you decided to make me be more specific. So I'm saying that I think Ferrari is going to totally flub the the rain the strategy on Sunday because it does not look like there's supposed to be rain on Friday or Saturday. Um, so they're just going to see all this rain and not know what to do with themselves. Sounds about right. Love them. Yeah. What about, about right. you? Um. So I think... I don't know if this is actually going to happen or not, but my my dumb is going to go to Mercedes, and they are going to let Red Bull run away with the constructors after talking a big game this week because they have been coming out strong, saying that they're making improvements to the car. This is a track suited for them. You know, Singapore is looking good for them. Everything under the sun. They're going to have a really strong showing. Everything. Mm. So my do a dumb is they don't come out strong and they actually score no points and Red Bull actually wins constructors this weekend. As much as it pains yeah. me to do that, that is my my dumb for the weekend. So we'll yeah. see. We will see. And also, Catherine, can you give us an update on if Max Verstappen can win the drivers' championship this weekend? Because I know we've kind of been talking about this. Yeah, so the answer is no, he can't. It is not mathematically possible at the moment <laughs> yet. Um, the, so the, the, way the, mathematic, the, the way the math works is, you know, it's not just dependent on Max's performance, but also the performance of the entire field. So at one point, there was an opportunity for him to, to win at Singapore, but then um, Paris started doing better. And so, you know, not really closing the gap to threaten him at all, but closing the gap to make it take a little bit longer before he can clinch the driver's title. Um, so the earliest possible point is now going to be next week at Suzuka. He needs needs uh he'll he'll need leaving Suzuka to be up 180 points um on Perez right now he's only up 100 and I know only up 145 points so no the answer is not yet but probably soon I want to know like I don't know if we have this stat or if anyone has a stat and the math is just like way too much math for my brain to work because remember I was thinking of driverless cars earlier um <laughs> Is it mathematically possible for anyone but Max to win at this? Well, at, wait, if that was possible, then he would already win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's still technically possible for someone else to win. Yeah, Perez. Um, I Is think... it only Perez, though? No, no, it's, it's, it's Perez, it's the Ferrari drivers. I think Fernando still has a chance, both Mercedes oh, thank drivers. Oh, God, there's still a chance. Okay. I mean, there's so still maybe a I chance. need to really start like turning on Max again because I've been kind of like ruffling his feathers a bit, you know, or like fluffing his feathers. You fluff mm. feathers when you're like I, whatever that saying again, Scooby Doo over here. Um, yeah, no, you you just really wanted to have uh, Nico Rosberg take a selfie with Max Verstappen in the Red Bull garage. <laughs> That's what you want to happen. Yes, Nico. 
I need you to come through for me this weekend and maybe every weekend until the season is over. I would love that. It would be amazing. Um, oh my God, the curse of Nico Rosberg. It is just so real. It's un, it's, it's so unbelievable how too. real it is. It's so funny because it's like, haha, this can't be real. And then it's like, wait, this is happening every single week. I think it might be it's real. Like f- it's like four times at this point. Yeah, it's real. I believe it. It's as real as the Monza curse. Exactly. So, see, the Monza Max curse has, has been broken. Max just has to prove that he can break it, and then it's just, it's broken. So, I want to see Max break the uh, Nico Rosberg curse. So, that's what I want to see. That is my final thoughts of the race weekend. <laughs> Max Max is uh, needs to break that curse. That's my final thoughts of the race weekend. What are your final thoughts of the race weekend, Catherine? Uh, my final thoughts of the race weekend are I'm not really looking forward to waking up at 4.30 in the morning to watch the last bit of pre-race coverage before the 5 a.m. start, because I like to sleep. Have you ever considered relocating? <laughs> uh, no. Would you rather be in humidity to watch an entire race weekend or have to wake up at Four o'clock in the morning to watch all all of the coverage. Wake up at four in the morning. I'll always just like take a nap after. <laughs> you heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. That is how much Catherine absolutely hates humidity. She doesn't want to oh, go yeah. to Singapore because she'd rather wake up at four o'clock in the morning because she. Excuse me. I will humidity. go to Singapore. <laughs> you to just said watch. you didn't want to be in the humidity. I I will go to the humidity, but I'm not living in the humidity. Okay. Let's make that. No, clear. I never said live. I never said live. I just said watch the race in the humidity, like meaning go to Singapore. Oh, I well, I'm obviously gonna go to Singapore one day. But anyway, final thoughts. It's gonna be an early morning for me. I will be taking a nap at some point Sunday afternoon. Um, and while we go through this weekend, don't forget to join us on Instagram at going.off.track for coverage and commentary and some shared memes that might entertain us all weekend long. <laughs> And also, don't forget, Monday's race recap will be dropping on your favorite podcast platform at 9 o'clock Eastern. That's been our Singapore Race Prediction Podcast. Thanks for going off track with us, guys.